Hey guys, what's up? My name's Playsite, and tonight we're talking about that crazy thing from Flash that nobody seems to understand. That's right, time remnants. Let's go. So, something I want to address quickly before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode is last week's episode. A lot of people mentioned that the audio was really off, and I do appreciate all the comments and all the criticism that people were t letting me know about this, and with all that said, for this episode, I have made it my mission to make sure it sounds amazing. So, with that idea going forward, hopefully this one will be fantastic. Anyway guys, you can let me know in the comments down below whether or not I succeeded or failed in my mission this week. So with that out of the way, let's talk about time remnants. What are they? How do they work? What's their relevance within the Flash? And how do they work with time travel? And is there seriously a better explanation than this? This is now, here, today. This is the time Thon comes from. This is the moment you all erased him from existence, but since Thawne is from the future, this is where his timeline begins. That's why he's still alive. This Thawne has not yet traveled back in time to kill Barry's mother. He's here now in this time period for the first time, timeline remnant. When it comes to these kind of characters, the CW's explanation left a lot of people really confused. They wanted to know, how does time travel work in a way that actually allows this? And to answer that question, there's actually something we have to know first. First of all, it's how time travel itself works, and what kind of paradoxes would normally come up as an issue for a lot of these things that have been shown in the show. So let's take a look. First there's the consistency paradoxes, which can be seen in the example of the grandfather's paradox. The example of the grandfather paradox actually makes a lot of sense. Now what this says is that if you were, for whatever reason, to go back and try and kill your grandfather to prevent some sort of evil thing or you, yourself to exist, as it were, you wouldn't be able to. And the reason being that if you were to do so, to go back and attempt to do that, the problem that would arise is you wouldn't be born. And that would not allow you to travel back. And so on and so on. And a loop of contingency. Now, the way that this is actually shifted is the idea of parallel universes. And we can actually see that in Barry's universe when he goes back to save his mom and creates Flashpoint, a completely different timeline. And we all saw how well that went. Today, I get to be the hero. Second, there is the closed causal loop idea. And what this concept of time travel essentially says is everything is predestined. If you go back, the way that you shift time in the past ends up being part of that timeline itself and actually is what sparks the time to unravel the certain way that it has. So essentially, it's saying that in order for you, you or whatever reality to exist, you have to travel back in time and shift things so that they end up the way that they are. Now, this is actually super relevant when talking about Reverse Flash's time remnants and Zoom's time remnants because this is exactly what's going on. When they were referring to the Reverse Flash, they were saying the reason they encountered him in the future is because it's part of his earlier timeline and the fact that Eddie had killed himself hadn't actually caught up with that version. Now, what that means is that basically when he's experiencing this, it's part of his timeline. He hasn't gone to the past in order to further influence Barry yet, so therefore he has to be able to make that change in order for time itself to sustain. Now, when it's not sustained, that's when the time race actually get involved. They're basically the paradox keepers of the Flash universe. Time rays. Scary, <laughs> aren't they? I thought, oh no. A time ray that's found me, but then I thought, no, no, no. You know what you're doing. Now the time ray is after someone who's traveled through time and doesn't know what they're doing. So now let's talk about the more complicated time remnant, and that's Zoom. Now, 
why he's more complicated is because he actually did some things that are a little harder to pin down. But if we hold consistent to what Cisco said in the original, and that the timeline has to actually complete and flow to allow certain things to happen, when Jay as Hunter Zolomon goes back into the past and brings his time remnant forward and past the time where he goes back in time, he's actually consistently holding to his own timeline while taking the time remnant out. Why that's relevant? Well, it essentially means that he's able to continue his own personal timeline, both of their personal timelines. Now, to say that, they're both part of the same timeline. So, when Solomon Zoom kills Jay, he's actually able to stabilize the timeline, as opposed to having a paradox of two Jays in one place, and where the the time race would have kind of an issue with that as they're literally the same person. He actually stabilizes it and causes reality to flow on a more linear designation. What is going on here? So in the end, what does this all mean? Well, simply put, it actually says that Zoom's idea of a consistent time remnant and his own consistent timeline it's actually consistent with his actual journey that he's taken. So that's why time remnants make sense in the case of Zoom. He's actually kept a consistent timeline. Now, Barry traveling through as a linear, he's experiencing it at different points. That's why things seem a little messed up. And a little bit confusing is because we're experiencing Zoom's time traveling in a linear perspective while he's experiencing it going back, pulling things forward, then shifting around, and doing different things. Now, when it comes to Barry's own time remnant, he does the same thing as Zoom. However, he goes back an instant before he teleported. Actually, no, I guess it would be considered after. Anyway, the point being this. He was able to keep two of himself in the same place, and he was able to divide and conquer. Now. That in itself, the way he did that, actually was a paradox. And that is why, when he did that, the time race show up. Because he's actually the one who's been messing with his own causal loop. He's causing it to almost fold in on itself because he's causing two entities of the same type to exist in the same plane without understanding the fact that he doesn't get to go back in time now and then cause all of this to happen. Essentially, that is why the time race show up and then they drag off Zoom because Vader is basically an asshole in that situation. So that's the reality of time remnants. So condense all that information down and what do you get? Well, basically, everything's a loop. Time is a loop. And the time remnants are part of a time loop that needs to complete itself, and that is what they aim to do. So time remnants are a part of a loop. A, a what now? A consistent timeline that exists, and they're able to be pulled out of as long as there is a point where they can coexist on the same timeline. And you can take them out as long as you maintain one continuous being as Barry or whatever speedster in the timeline consistently going through linearly and you're unable to do that you create a paradox and that draws the time race and that is in the end what led to zoom becoming the black flash thanks for listening I really hope that kind of made the time remnant thing a little bit clearer anyway guys thank you so much for watching this has been reflections I'm splice night and if you like this video, subscribe and share with your friends to let them know. I hope it wasn't too confusing, guys. It's a bit of a crazy, ridiculous concept to get your mind around. Um, but anyway, if you liked it, hit that like button, share it with your friends, let everybody know, and uh, hopefully we can clear things up a little bit, bit by bit. If you're interested in further content from me, I do TV music videos on the CW, like The Flash, as well as Arrow, DC Legends of Tomorrow, even Lucifer, if you're interested in that. 
And on top of all of that, I also do vlogs on Thursday, and obviously Friday is when reflections like this come out. So if you're interested in content like that, hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you so much again for watching, and I will talk to you next Friday. Ho!